Hi everyone, it's Lori. Today's episode, I'm sharing a recent photo shoot with you where I was capturing these beautiful single stem flowers and I wanted to share with you five different compositions and five different ways of editing. So let's jump in and get started. I'm gonna start with this composition first. So I love to capture the back of flowers. I think it just gives a different option, a different viewpoint, and a lot of times the details and coloring are really beautiful. Now, I've already done some basic edits. So this was the image before. I did expose for the background, so my flower was a little dark. To remedy that, I already applied a subject mass and increased and opened up the shadows. So I've already taken care of that and um, wanted to do that before, um, before you join me today. So next up, what I wanna show you for this image, my tip for this one is going to be, I'd love to give the image a little bit of this red pink color in the background so that it just makes it a little bit more cohesive. cohesive. So to do that, I'm going to do a radial gradient. So we're gonna click the plus sign, do a radial gradient. I'm gonna come over and select kind of right there in the center of my flower. But now what we need to do is click the invert option. Invert is right here on the right. That's going to give the mask to the outside area. I want to keep the feather kind of soft, so I'm just going to bring that area in. This is your feather area. You can see where the dark is going to be your heaviest part of your mask, and then it's going to soften. And um, I'm going to just put this right over the flower. All right, so now what I want to do is come down, and I'm going to add a little bit of magenta tint to that part of the image. You can see how that's doing. Now, I also could come over and I'm going to increase the saturation, but I want to try to add, draw all this over and add some color. So let's take our overlay off. That, that can be kind of bothersome, um, but you can see I'm going to bring this over. I don't want to use the fine adjustment, so I'm going to bring this hue over, yeah, to the pink. This is kind of like color grading. So you could also do some color grading if you wanted, but I think it's so much easier to work with your tent slider and just impact that in a really fun way. So, and then if you want, you know, you could take the hue back where it was. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back, but I just wanted you to know that was an option. So um, I think that's a fun way to impact the image, just giving it that slight, slight color there. All right, I'm going to go back to the basic panel now, and I want to scroll down to effects, and I do want to give this image a vignette just to bring in that focus and fun. And then color grading would be the other option that we can do. The highlights are so bright in this image. So what I like to do is go ahead and we're going to click on the highlights right here. I like to take the luminance and I'm gonna take it all the way up and then I'm going to drag this around to the color that I want. Now you can also do saturation. So if we wanna impact the saturation, we can also do that. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can, there's the saturation. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's bring that luminance back. I'm gonna bump the saturation, there we go. Now I can see that color, we need kind of that um, pink color. We could also come over, there we go. And then just bring your saturation back. So you can slide it back over and now you've got some of that, some of that pink tone in there. So we can see before it was really white and after. Now at this point, um, I'm pretty happy, but again, I'm gonna bring down the highlights overall, and then I'm going to go back to my first mask with the subject, and I'm just going to bump the exposure because we had darkened it just a little bit. So that's gonna do it for this image. So image composition one was shooting behind your flower, shooting the back for detail. And my tip was using a radial gradient to bring in some color tones or even color grading. 
All right, I'm gonna take a pause and I'll be right back to do image number two. Here with image number two, and this image was shot where I captured some of the vase and I loved the leading lines and the bokeh that was kind of surrounding this flower. So when you are composing flowers, it's single stems especially, think about the lines that the flower has. Also think about capturing it with it being over on the right, leaning over to the left versus the opposite direction. So I think it just gives a fun alternative. And I like that the vase is here just for some perspective. So this is a totally different composition, getting the center and the side view of the flower and really focusing on this leading line. Now, this was the image before, so I've just done some really minor edits. If we go to the basic panel, I opened up the shadows and reduced the highlights, and that's really all I've done to this image. So my vision for this, the exposure and everything is already really nice, but I don't want this glass vase to be as bright. So when you are editing your image, look at all parts. Is there anything that's distracting? And while this isn't distracting, I don't want it to be as prevalent as it is. So we are going to use a linear gradient. So I'm just going to come in and darken that a little bit. And we can bring down the highlights. Also the whites. You can tell immediately that's made a difference. And we could also darken it just a little. So I think already if you look at before and after, I think it makes just a really big difference and it's something so, so simple that you can do. So really for this image, I think that's all that I would do. I may want to come down, we could add a little bit of texture, which would really kind of make our flower pop a little, even a little clarity, but I think that's it for this one. So that's image number two kind of a side um, composition with a leading line and including the vase in the side. All right, let's jump over to number three. All right, so to get started with this image, the first thing that I need to do is crop it. So I knew when I was shooting it, um, I wanna go ahead and crop it and kind of get that flower right at the rule of thirds and the center of the flower at the center of the frame. So that's what I'm going for. Now, I also have this little blob of light over here. So I'm going to bring that over a little bit more. I think that's still accomplishing what I want. And let's see how that looks. Well, I'm going to undo that. Let's go back to our crop. Actually, I'm going to give it a little more space over here. So that's keeping it still right at the rule of thirds. And then that's pretty much at the center. Yeah, I like that better. Sometimes you need some space, especially with the leading line. So you could decide how much of that you wanted. Now, the next thing I'm going to do with this image is open up the shadows a little. I am going to bring down the highlights just a tiny bit. And this image is really in pretty good shape. So we're going to do a couple um, masks for this image. So my number one tip for this one is highlighting using the brush the center of your flower. So I just want to come in and just open up the shadows and give this just a little pop. So I'm just going to open up the shadows a little bit, give it just a little bitty bit of glow there. And if you want to come down and also give it a little bit of texture and clarity, you could do that as well. Maybe just a little there. Let's check that exposure again. Yeah, just a tiny bit. So I think that's really nice. Let's look at it before and after. You can see what a difference, just that little bit. Um, I kind of call it giving it a kiss. Just a little kiss of exposure makes a big difference. Okay, the second tip for this image is I want to do a linear gradient. And I'm going to come down from this corner, kind of curve it up. And what I want to do is darken it just a little bit to kind of match the other side bring down the highlights, but I also want to play with the tint. So I'm thinking about maybe bringing in some pink or maybe darker green. There we go. I like that green for this one. So just a little bit there. All right, so now that we've done our mask, I'm going to go back to the basic. 
I'm going to give the brightness just a little pop and I'm going to take down kind of the darker area. Just kind of bringing that up. You can also lower your whites just so it's really kind of soft and matte looking. And one other thing I'm going to do, this is another trick that I like to do. I'm going to grab the brush and I'm going to make the flow and density of the brush at about 50%, but I want my feather really high. And I'm just going to pop on this bokeh right out here that's right at our flower and just kind of around it. And I'm just going to give it a little tiny bit of exposure and brightness. Now you could also do it with the tone curve. And let's increase the flow just a little bit. Just going to do just a tiny bit. Whoops. Just to kind of bring a little bit of brightness in this area. I'm just kind of popping it around really soft, just really intentional. I like the depth, but I just want to pop some of that around so it, it really enhances it. So let's look at it before. And here's our after image. Just a few quick changes really made a big difference. And if you want to go back, I think I'm going to go back to the mask. And that first mask here, I think the exposure might be just a little bright. So I'm just going to bring that down just a touch. All right, there's before and there's after. Okay, next up, we have a really fun composition. So this composition is very similar to the one that you're looking at, but I wanted to get in really, really close. And for this image, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and rotate it. So you can go up to photo. I'm going to flip it so that it's from um, left to right, which is kind of standard with, um, of course, reading and photography here in the U.S. So first thing I'm going to do is I am going to crop this a lot tighter. And you can decide if you want to crop off some of the petals. So I could bring the image all the way in like that, which is actually what I like. I think that um, just getting rid of that, bringing it in really tight and letting the story be all of this detail. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring down the highlights just a little bit, open up the shadows. But what I want to do next is probably take this image into Photoshop. Um, I want to really bring out these details and I want to work a little bit on this background. So I'm going to right click, edit in Photoshop, and I'll meet you over there in just a couple seconds. All right, so here's our image that we had cropped. So for this image, the first thing that I want to do, I do want to fix this little area up here that's a little bit um, off color. So I think I'm just going to use the clone tool. And I'm just going to grab that tool, click the option key, and I'm just going to make that just kind of go away. Just blend. I want it to look like our petal is just going off the page. So that's the first thing I want to do. Now I'm going to duplicate that layer again. I am going to grab my eyedropper and I want to select this really light pink color. All right, now I'm going to grab my brush. I want to keep the opacity really, really low. My flow is about 50%. I'm going to make my brush really large. And I am just going to pop in you probably can hardly see it. I am just adding some pink, making my own kind of texture around the edges of this image. So just not changing the whole background, but just enhancing it because it was kind of, kind of boring. Now what you can do is go grab your eyedropper and select a darker color, go grab your brush, and let's take the opacity, make it even slighter, just, you know, maybe about 10%. And then go into your corners and just kind of pop, pop that darker color in there. Hit it a couple times. So now we've just kind of given it our own custom, custom kind of look and texture. All right, so that's the first thing. 
Now, the next thing I want to do is actually bring out all this incredible detail. And I'm going to go up to layer. I'm going to flatten the image. And what I want to do now is I am going to do filter and I'm going to take it into Topaz Sharpen AI. So I thought this was the perfect image to show you the tools that are available with Topaz. Now I have the old version of AI. Topaz does have a whole new product, but it all works pretty much the same way. So once you're in here, you can put it on kind of auto where it's going to suggest what it wants to do for your image. You can see in the bottom left that it's processing right now. It's saying that it's very blurry. Now I did shoot it at 2.8, so I'm not expecting it to be super sharp, but I thought if I could just add a little bit more detail, it might make it really nice. So let's click our image to see the original, and now we can see the detail. If you just look at these little front, you can see a lot more detail in them, a lot more detail in the stems. Now, there's some weirdness that happens when you use this tool, especially if you shot something really soft as I did. But what I'm gonna do is click apply. That's going to apply the technique. Now, anytime you use a program like this where you are sharpening something, bringing out details, you wanna double check it. I did not focus stack this image. I did not shoot it at a very um, large depth of field. So it's going to give me some weird things that I am going to want to mask out. So as soon as we get back into Photoshop, I'm just going to apply a mask, brush off those kind of weird areas, and then we'll have our image complete. So sometimes I love to capture an image that gives us a lot of great detail. And if you look at this image, I just think that that um, is beautiful. Now you can see um, a little bit of weird stuff right there. So um, it's not too bad the way it came back in. I don't think, at first it looked like it was gonna be really, really weird, but it looks like it's all turned out okay. So that is the um, edited image. Let me go and see. Yeah, this was the image before we flipped it. So I wanna zoom in so you can see this area. And now that we flipped it and all this detail and our background, I think it's really, really, um, really pretty now. All right, let's go over and look at our last and final image. So this one I thought was just so fun. So this is a different perspective where you're getting the entire flower kind of shooting up and the flower is going into this beautiful bokeh light. So this is an image that immediately I knew I needed to take into Photoshop. I love it, but it's got this big, big white circle that I'm not going to be able to fix in Lightroom. I also want to extend the canvas with the generative fill option in Photoshop. So let's jump over to Photoshop and make those adjustments and I'll show you those couple quick tips. All right, so here's our image. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the background layer. And the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna grab the clone tool and I'm gonna make my brush pretty large. Pick a spot anywhere in and I'm just gonna try to go over this area and give it a little bit of this. Click the Option key. Yeah, put a little bit of that green around it. Just trying to um, soften that spot and maybe even put some green over in here. see let's grab some of this bokeh bring that over now I'm at 100% opacity but you could take it down I'm just trying to layer some of this bokeh so that the two sides kind of match so that's my tip for this image I like to make sure that kind of especially with an image that's in the center if your subjects right there in the center 
So I am just grabbing bokeh from this side and just bringing it over and just kind of blending that. All right, so that was before and that's after. So easy to do, just takes a few minutes using the clone tool. All right, so now the next thing I wanna do is I want to extend this canvas. So let's do a stamped layer, Command Option Shift and the letter E. And we're gonna go up to our crop tool. Now I'm gonna scroll out so you can see what's happening. And I am going to drag this down. And we're going to just click Generate. And the Photoshop AI feature is going to expand this canvas for us. And it's going to expand our flower. So we'll see how good it does. Um, I've tried it multiple times and think that it does a pretty good job. Oh, yeah, pretty nice. Now, you usually get a couple options. Oh, that option's much better. Very nice. Let's check the third one. Oh, eh, I'm not sure I like that one. I think the stem's too thick. That one's not bad. So I think I'll go with that one. And then actually, probably what I'll do is actually crop it just a little, maybe right above that. So we just got a little bit extra space. And I just think it really just makes that nice difference in the image from before to now. All right, so my tips for this image were extending the canvas, working on your bokeh, and now I would save the image and take it back into Lightroom. Really, the only thing else that I wanna do is give the center a little bit of pop, maybe clean up some of the petals, and we can do all of that in Lightroom. So let's go up to File, Save, and I'm just gonna say Image Compression None. I wanna take the full image back into Lightroom, and once it's done saving, I just need to close it out. And then I'll meet you back in Lightroom. Okay, here's our extended canvas image. And so what I wanna do for my basic edits is open up the shadows, lower those highlights just a little bit. And I am going to use the um, object mask for this one. And I'm just gonna come in and select that center of the flower. We'll see how good it does. Uh, it didn't do so great, but we're gonna try. Yeah, that's not gonna work. So sometimes that tool just does not work. So what I'm gonna do is grab the brush, make the brush smaller using my bracket key. So be sure you use your bracket key for um, working on your brushes. It makes it so, so easy. It's on your keyboard. I learned that a few years ago and it's super handy. Certain shortcuts I really, really like and that is one of them. So I'm just gonna go over this area and enlarge that brush just a little bit, really get this area filled in with my mask. Okay, I'm not worried about the little white parts of the center of the flower. So now I'm just gonna give it a little, that kiss of exposure, just give it a little brightness. And I think I wanna go over it right here too. Now, while you're here, if you wanted to do anything with your petals, you could. So we can just still use the brush, maybe light paint those just a little bit and even the leaves, just to give those a little bit more interest. And I'm gonna grab the eraser. I'm gonna make my brush smaller and I'm just gonna clean up right in those areas. I just don't want it to look, um, you know, fake and weird. And then I'm gonna go back to my brush. And yeah, I'm just gonna add that brightness right in there to the center. Okay, and let's take that exposure. There we go. Just really, really soft. Let's look at that before and after, what a difference it makes. And you can decide how much brightness you want, but I think that um, looks nice. Now I do have some cleanup that I wanna do on this image. So I'm gonna grab the, um, I like to use the Content Aware Remove. I start with that usually, and I just wanna clean up. I don't clean up every flower, but 
I just don't want the distractions because this is such a beautiful little little dancer. I just want to clean that up. So I hope, hope you've enjoyed this episode of looking and thinking about different compositions. So often we get stuck in the same kind of rut. And so I encourage you to think about leading lines, think about perspective, um, think about different shooting angles. Are you wanting to bring out details or make things really soft? And you can do all of that with one subject and just shoot it in multiple ways. And then try different editing techniques for each image. So today we've covered lots of tips. We've covered various masking and adding color and light. So I hope that you will play around with some of these tools. I am trying to get this cleaned up. You can see sometimes, yeah, this is giving us giving us a fit today. Um, I'm going to undo those. I probably should have cleaned it up in Photoshop. So sometimes the Lightroom tools just don't do a very good job cleaning up. So I am undoing these to see if I can get it back. May have to take the image back into Photoshop, but there we go. That's not too bad. Not exactly what I want, but it's getting there. So I'm going to keep playing with this image and um, get it all, all final and ready to go. Thank you so much for watching. Please take a minute to click like, subscribe, share this channel with any photo friends that you think might enjoy it. And I hope you have fun and that it's starting to be spring where you live.